my youngest, I love having conversations with my youngest son. My youngest son is probably the, he's the more millennial of them. <laughs> okay, well that makes sense, yes. <laughs> but he, he has a view. He has a way of thinking. And he challenges things. Now he's the only one that wanted to go to college, so he is college educated. Not saying that the other two are yeah, yeah. ignorant or idiots, no. but he's the one that is more academic. He's reading and researching, and that's his interest lies there, right. for sure. Right. So we'll have conversations. He sent my wife and I uh, a text the other day. What are your thoughts? Uh, children. Should not, parents should not make their children feel obligated to take care of them because they didn't ask to come here. Huh. I said, that's an entitlement attitude. Yes, we shouldn't make you feel obligated, but nevertheless, you should feel some sense of obligation or commitment to your parents because of who you are as a result of them, whether you ask to come here or not. Mm -hmm. Everything that you have is a result of them. <laughs> so then when we came back to this other conversation about college, Somebody posted on Twitter, because my youngest son is a big Twitter fan. So I, I see his posts, and you know, we, we conversate about them. Now, and, and that's another thing. Somebody said conversate is not a word. Yeah, oh, it's plenty it, good here. It is a word now. <laughs> Years ago it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. But it's been added to the dictionary. Conversate is a word. You want to come at us with that? We'll go yeah. at you. But we'll conversate about, about it. change. Yeah, There's yeah. change over time. That's and so true. we were talking about the books. At one point, the books were all it was. But now you have so many mediums. You oh. have the audio books. Audio but podcasts. All I them. love it. I have been listening to more of them. What are the podcasts that you listen to now? I listen more to, um, I listen to motivational stuff. Okay. I've, actually, more, more recently, I've been listening to more TDJ stuff. Oh, I love him. Yeah, his stuff he's amazing. Is, I mean, he's a brilliant orator. And the stuff that he says, it makes sense. Uh, I listen to my pastor every Sunday. I mean, I'm here for three services every wow, Sunday. Wow, okay. Most Sundays. So I hear that. That's not a podcast, but I'm still a good content. He's yeah, giving at least an hour and a half every service. So I'm listening to that every Sunday, listening to him. I don't listen to him as much on others because most of the stuff that he's saying, I was here and I heard. Yeah. But that's not saying that I, I don't need to hear it again because what I, what I heard when I heard it, I'm not the same person now. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I might hear something that he said back then. I might hear it now, and it'll take a different light. So mm. I gotta start putting him in there. But he does. I don't. Well, yeah, he does on YouTube. We do have little clips. On oh, YouTube. that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, because isn't it really the the most value is gonna come from the the pragmatic action that will occur after right. interpreting whether whatever it is a podcast right. a sermon audio book, right. whatever that is. And who you are tomorrow coming back to the book that you read yesterday, you you better darn be a different person. Yeah. I like the podcast. Books for me, I agree with the data. My wrestle. I like to interact with my books. I like to highlight them. I find when I read a physical book, my recall is greater. My retention is greater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shared that with um, Tim Kohler at Lancaster Bible College. And he said, yeah, but the stuff that you remember is greater than what you forget. And that made a lot more sense to me. So if you read a book, 200-page yeah. book, brilliant. and you, you forget 190 pages of it, but you got 10 pages of good content. Well, I mean, when you do that and you do a 1,000, right. you're a winner. Right.